Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. So in this video, we are going to show you how you can build your very own smartwatch. Now, obviously we didn't build this one, but the idea is to build something very similar with a lot of features and we want to see how far DIY smartwatches can take us. So we started thinking and we did this. We found some very good results over the internet. After some googling, we came to a conclusion that our smartwatch should have a small form factor so that it can fit on our wrist and it should have a colorful TFT display with some good animations around and it should have a lot of features. So in the end, we ended up building this. To make it more interesting, we also added multiple watch faces, a heart rate sensor, a compass and even some games. Yeah, I really suck playing Flappy Birds. I tried. So this video is all about showing you how we built this watch, explaining what's inside, its circuit diagram and its functions. So let's roll the intro. Before we get into the video, it's important for me to mention the sponsors for this video, PCBWay. PCBWay provides high quality PCB fabrication and prototype services. They are well equipped to handle standard and advanced PCB designs and can also provide SMD stencil and PCB assembly services. They are known for their shorter lead time, quick customer support and also supports the maker community. So do consider giving them a try for your next PCB. Now. Coming back to our project, let's take a look at the components required to build our smartwatch. The main brain behind our smartwatch is the ESP32 microcontroller. But apart from that, we will also need an accelerometer, a magnetometer, a battery protector IC, an ambient light sensor, a heart rate sensor, and few other components. But don't be overwhelmed by the list of components. The basic idea here is to build a smartwatch with an open source hardware and software so that it can be tinkered and improvised over time. So what we have done is we have added every possible sensors that a smartwatch might require into the mix. That being said, let's take a look at the circuit diagram for this project. So here we are. So the first section here is the USB input and ESD protection. So we have a micro USB uh, input port over here and this TV is diode for ESD protection. So this micro USB port can be used for charging the battery. Yes, we have a LiPo battery inside our uh, watch and we can also use this to program our ESP32 microcontroller. Now, how this programming is done is using this USB to UART converter IC, uh, CP2102 to be in specific. You could have seen this IC in your Arduino boards and Arduino Nano boards and everywhere. So basically, it is used to program this ESP32 chip and also for serial communication. Then on the top left, we have two ICs, two sections. One is for battery charger and another is for battery protection, which is done using the FS8205EA IC. So what basically these two IC does is this IC model monitors the voltage of the battery when the battery is getting charged and once it reaches 4.2 it will cut it off and there is an indication LED as well and these two ICs will monitor the battery for under voltage and over voltage and even for over current and if any one of that happens it will immediately disconnect the battery from our circuit to prevent any mishaps from happening. Over to the right, we have the 3.3 volt LDO and the 1.8 volt LDO, both of which are used to regulate voltage for our whole project. Everything works on 3.3 volt, except for a heart rate sensor, which needs 1.8 volt. So we have used two separate LDOs. Then moving on, uh, here comes the most important IC in our project, which is the ESP32. So uh, we have not used any simple ESP32. We have used the ESP32 TTGO mainly for two reasons. One, it has a very small form factor and the other, it has an, a lot of inbuilt flash memory so that all the graphical uh, work which we'll be doing with our smartwatch will have enough space uh, in the flash memory. And this is what is happening here. We have also connected an external SRAM uh, to have these graphics load faster without any jitters. And then we have a power on reset and a switch to reset the ESP32 while programming. Then we have the actual TFT display, which we have used, which is 240 cross 280 pixels and uh, 1.69 inches in uh, size and then uh, let's get back here later and over the bottom you can see all the sensors which we have actually used for this project you can see the accelerometer sensor the usb to uart converter okay this is something wrong here i am sorry this is actually a magnetometer is over here 
we have an accelerometer sensor and over here it's actually not a usb to uart converter it is the mpu 6050 accelerometer and gyroscope ic it's named uh, wrong over here i'm sorry for that but yeah on the bottom you can see all the sensors which we have used in this watch we have the heart rate sensor we have the ambient light sensor and on the top we have a micro sd card and a vibration motor so the vibration motor is for haptic feedbacks and the micro sd card is for future use just in case you want to load up some big files you can put it on the micro sd card or read it with your esp321 display it on the lcd so this is just a brief overview of all the components present here uh, in fact uh, this uh, magnetic sensor sorry uh, this uh, magnetometer sensor you see here is uh, used for uh, uh, used for making the compass on your watch and this heart rate sensor is used for uh, detecting the heartbeat while it is on your wrist and this ambient light sensor is used for adjusting the con uh, ad adjusting the brightness of your display based on the ambient light outside this pretty much explains how the entire hardware is designed hope this has given you a clear idea on what's inside our watch if you need more information you can always head on to our website to look at the circuit diagram part marking images its explanation and everything else once the schematics is ready all that we have to do is design our pcbs and get it fabricated when done we had these two uh, beautiful black pcbs now i have already told you why we needed uh, two pcbs but uh, let's visualize it again so these are the two boards and when you populate it you get uh, something like this I, I have already placed a similar uh, board inside the smartwatch so let's visualize how it is placed so what we have done is uh, we have the uh, lcd display connected to this side of the board and we have placed it in this orientation inside the watch you can actually see the connectors matching up over here and the button over here uh, is uh, provided with this uh, plastic piece so once this board is placed we have the other board over here which uh, goes in like this and we have the battery uh, sandwiched in between we have the lipo battery sandwiched in between so what happens is we have our heart rate sensor over here uh, which goes uh, directly to the wrist and then uh, we have the vibration motor which is also uh, which will also be somewhere over here so on the back side you can see the heart rate sensor we have used a tiny paper to split between the uh, emitter and receiver of this heart rate sensor and uh, the uh, vibration motor which you see here will come somewhere over here and in this project we have not used the sd card but if you want you can provide a slot over here and use it for sd card as well so uh, that is it this is why we have uh, two pcbs and this is why we have used a ribbon connector to connect these two pcbs together everything is done to get a small form factor now of course this is not very pretty looking height but this is something we can get away with if we are able to find a different type of power source which is much thinner than the lipo battery which we are currently using and moving on one more thing which i have to say is uh, if you see there are a lot of tiny teeny components on top of this board if you can see and it is really not easy to solder all of them by hand which is why we got a pcb stencil as well from a pcb way so this is the stencil and it was delivered by pcb way let me should quickly show you how the stencil looks like so that's it this is a just a simple stencil you can just add place your pcb board underneath this and you can apply the hot solder paste and you can solder them easily so again uh, the gerber file and everything can be found at the link given in the description of this video okay the next stop is to get an enclosure we used the 3d model of our pcb and designed a compact enclosure which goes very well on our wrist once the design was ready, we 3D printed the top cover and bottom cover and it looks something like this. With this enclosure, we were able to build this watch. Moving on, the next thing we should discuss is about the firmware for this project and this is where things get a bit complicated. See, the firmware for this project is really long and it is not possible for me to explain it in this video, but 
we have provided a complete explanation of how the code works on our website. In fact, we have split it into three tutorials and the first one will teach you how to build watch faces for the ESP32. The second one will teach you how to use ambient light sensor with your watch and the third one will teach you how to use magnetometer and gyroscope. You put all these three tutorials together and you'll be able to build our final version of the smartwatch. With that, we have come to a conclusion for this video. We have explained the hardware and we have given enough resources for you to build your very own smartwatch. Go ahead and build it on your own. If you have learned anything useful from this video, do consider giving a like and also subscribe to this channel. That would mean a lot. And with that being said, this is Ashwin here signing off. Have a nice day. Tata bye bye.